Hi, I'm Brett. Today we're going to talk about the variable cam control in the Subaru EJ series engines. And as you remember from our previous model uh, videos, um, they went from non-variable cam to dual variable cam to quad variable cam. So let's just quickly touch on that topic so you know what we're talking about first. And that is on the tops of, of the front of the engine, you can see they've got a larger nose where the um, cam pulley connects to the belt to the um, camshaft which is inside the engine and this part here is variable internally for allowing the camshaft to advance and retard while the engine is running and also on the exhaust side. Now on the early model Subarus they only had um, a dual variable cam and then the later models they had quad variable cam on all four uh, camshafts and you'll notice this one here has got a, uh, the cover over the top because inside here there's oil pressure and an o-ring I'll show you that in a minute but you see the one down the bottom we've actually pulled the cover off and I've got one dismantled to show you in a minute what it looks like because it's a bit hard to show in the video down here but you'll also see on the other side they're slightly different in the design but the cover has been removed off this one so we can see if there's any problems internally and you can see this is the bolt that you need to remove to take the pulley off the front of the camshaft if you're pulling the engine apart and down the bottom you can also see um, the different design on the exhaust side as well. So let's have a look at what we're talking about here. And this is the actual part here. And in the previous videos with an engine rebuild, we've spoken about what to look for on these variable cam control pulleys. And this particular engine is a really good example whereby um, the client um, bought a, uh, well, basically grenaded his engine and decided to do just a generic replacement second-hand engine which was in real, reasonably good condition. The supplier that supplied him the engine thought that the engine um, was pretty much um, unmolested and virgin. We've then um, run the engine up and then diagnosed that it's actually got a faulty uh, variable cam control pulley. Now you might say well how did we work that out because incredibly and rather unusually but not as a surprise, is you won't see this as a fault code on your engine um, ECU or on the dash of your car because this is what is controlled by the ECU but doesn't have the ability to send a signal back to the ECU to tell whether it's working or not. It's like boost control for example, the engine ECU will try to hit a target boost but if the mechanical side of the turbo can't achieve it, the engine ECU will not know that, it will just always keep trying to hit a target boost. And it's the same thing with variable cam control. You've got the VVT um, control mechanism and behind the hair, inside at the back of the tops of the heads on, on, the, on both all four camshafts, you've got an acting solenoid which controls the oil pressure going to these parts and they also give problems. But um, the ECU doesn't have the ability to know if the camshaft is advancing or retarding within spec or is as fast as what it should normally do. And in this particular example, we suspected there was something not quite right because the car was just a little bit lazy in its response to variable cam timing. And what we did was we pulled the front off the pulleys and found internally, and, here's, and there's an example here, there's normally a pin that is located on the inside here. And I'll get my camera to zoom in there. It's a little bit hard to see, but that pin normally has a, is similar to this pin here and inside there is a, a clockwork mechanism or a, a spring which aids the pulley in, and you can actually see the spring down in this one here. There's the spring, it's still in place. So what happens is the, um, uh, the spring aids the pulley to return back quicker than what the oil pressure can activate it because remember on the back side here, you've got this advancing and retarding mechanism of the, of the pulley, which is controlled by oil pressure. Now, if that spring is not working as it should, then the ability of the speed of that to respond in opposite directions for advancing and retarding is dulled and effectively responds slower. So in the case of this particular engine, unknown to the buyer of the engine or the seller of the engine, this pin was broken. Now you might say, well, how do we know it was broken or how did it actually get broken? So if you're pulling these um, pulleys off the front of your engine, it is really, really important that you do it in a very careful way because if you're not using the correct standard service tools, when you undo this bolt here, what can happen is the, the friction of trying to undo the bolt on the pulley can, um, puts too much load on the internal mechanism of the pulley and then this part here actually snaps off 
And unless you pull it apart, because this is normally over the top, as in the, whether it's an inlet or an exhaust one, because um, they're different sizes, of course, for different size pulleys, um, you would never know because all the parts are inside here and you think, oh yeah, it's just all okay. We'll just put it all back together and you would never notice the difference. So bottom line is, when you've got all of these parts as assembled one part together, because very rarely you would pull them completely apart, you must be very, very careful when you're removing and replacing these pulleys if you're doing an engine rebuild or for some reason you have to pull them off the front of the engine because ultimately, at the end of the day, you may not even know that you've got broken variable cam control pulleys in your car unless you've got a tuner who's really, really um, fussy on looking at the data logs or has done a lot of cars to know what to look for. And in the kitchen situation like this, a really good point to harp on is at the end of the day, you may have a tuner who knows how to use the software, but if he doesn't do a lot of tuning on this model car, he may not have that finite ability to look at those detailed changes based on experience and in the case of this, our attention to detail has allowed us to deliver back a result to a customer that maybe some other workshops would never have noticed and they just think, oh, the variable cam control is a little bit dull or the engine's a little bit down on performance because there's no fault codes, everything must be okay. So there you have it. There's the difference between a really good tuner and an average tuner or a workshop who knows what they're looking for or a workshop who may not. But the bottom line is, if you're looking at looking after your car and you want to do engine rebuilds, make sure you have a close look at these components when you're assembling them and dismantling them. And most of all, make sure you use the genuine standard service tools, particularly for undoing and doing up these bolts when you're replacing them on the front of your camshafts. And check out our other video because I show you in more detail of what this mechanism looks like. And we'll put a link at the bottom of this video as well. So hopefully I haven't confused you too much, but it is the details that makes a difference at the end of the day in having a fun car to drive. Of course, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Make sure you visit our website at mrttuned.com.au for some really helpful um, documents and data on how you can make your car go better. And remember, anywhere in Australia, we can custom tune your car locally near you through our partner network. And for today, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.